for 10 minutes, right, DJ? Right. Uh, once again, my name is Jim Cavall. I'm class of 2005, and I attended Montebello from 02 to 05. In two of those years, I got to play baseball here. And it's funny, I think a lot of you would agree with me if you played sports at Montebello, but whatever you're doing now, if there's anything you do that has anything to do with leadership, you can testify that you took something from your experience here athletically and translate it into what you do now. I know that so many things I do now as a leader uh, are a lot easier because I played for Coach Reasoner and Coach Goff, who both, uh, and I think I'm unique in that, I played one year for each of them, they both taught me a lot about leadership, and, and so I'm thankful for my experience at Montevello. We're gonna bring up the leader of the athletic program right now, Mark Richard, to say a few words, then we're gonna bring up the leader of our campus, and then we're gonna get started. So first, Mark Richard. Thank you, Jim. I want to wish everyone a good evening. Welcome our distinguished inductees, their family members, current members of the Athletics Hall of Fame, staff members of Montebello, and the great supporters of the UM Falcon Athletics family. This is the 22nd class to be inducted into the Athletics Hall of Fame, and we have an all-star lineup. We have a record crowd here tonight. 276 people are here to see these inductees. So give your hand, give yourself a hand. This is proof that this, this is a really special class. It's an extremely tough and gratifying job to select the inductees, and I've really enjoyed working with the Hall of Fame committee. At this time, I want to recognize the members who have helped us out and our members of the Hall of Fame committee. If you please stand and hold your ovation, ovation till the end. Uh, Don Makovsky, our Assistant Athletic Director, Senior Women's Administrator. Michael Chadwick, Assistant Athletic Director. Wesley Hallman, our Director of Media Relations. Dr. Harold Hamilton, everybody's favorite professor. Head Coach Danny Young. I don't think Dr. Tyler's here. Paula Bedrin. Mike Malone. Coach Bob Razor. Thank you, committee members, for all your hard work. I want to recognize uh, every, every team has an all academic All American, our first team All American. Paula, where is, where is Paula? Paula is our All American. She's done a fabulous job. I think all the inductees have worked through her, and uh, my hat's off. We couldn't get this pulled off. Paula, thank you very much. We also have some of our head coaches here today. We'd like to recognize them. Our head coaches do a fantastic job recruiting the type of student athletes who not only perform on the playing field, but most importantly, excel in the classroom. If athletics is the front porch of a university, then these individuals are at the very top step. So from here, from our baseball staff, is, uh, is head coach Chandler Rose here yet? They're finishing up the doubleheader. They won the second game, what, 23 0, Danny? So they're finishing up. Eric Moss, our assistant coach, will be coming in. Assistant coach Danny Peruto, over there, Danny. <laughs> Danny, the guy getting thrown out at third base wasn't your fault. I backed you out of the way. So that was your fault. Head coach Cindy Hilbrick of the women's basketball team, Coach Hilbrick. Head coach Bruce Dieterle from our men's soccer team. Where's Coach Dieterle right here? Of course, head coach Danny Young making his way through. <laughs> when you examine this class that's going in, you have five sports representatives. You have baseball, men's women's basketball, men's soccer, and volleyball. We are inducting tonight an all-conference baseball player at two positions a prolific men's basketball scorer, one of the best soccer defenders on the pitch. It's a soccer term, right, Bruce? Yeah. 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 On the pitch. A versatile volleyball player who did everything asked of her on the court. A women's basketball player who's a relentless rebounder. A two-sport player who blazed the path for future African-American student athletes in Montebello. A meritorious service inductee who has a distinguished career on and off the court in two of 
Montevallo's greatest sports teams are being Montevallo being inducted tonight. The statistics, the award, and the honors are truly amazing. We're also bringing back the Dr. Leon Davis Award after a seven-year break. The award is for a former student athlete who has brought distinction, distinction and personal achievement to themselves after the playing days of Montevallo. It's great to see Coach Davis here, Coach Leon Davis. Thank you. You know, many of you have not been to campus for a long time, and we've had a lot of changes. I've heard some of the student, former student athletes say that. And uh, we've got some exciting things happening. Recently, last year, we opened up the softball field. About this time, our softball field is the best in Division II, and it rivals many in Division I. The track and field in lacrosse stadium, we opened that last April. We hosted the Beach Bell Championship. Fabulous, fabulous facility. We are also starting the uh, baseball, uh, dog, I'm sorry, the, ba the baseball clubhouse. The baseball team has been in existence since 1958. They've never had a true home. So that project will start next month with a baseball clubhouse. And then the building behind track is a parking garage for traffic safety. We're going to turn that into locker rooms for our lacrosse team, for our track and field, coaches' offices, and also we're going to have a, a, another athletic training. So a lot of great things are going on. Uh, it takes a lot of people to make that happen. I want to thank Alex Duchot, the Candy County Manager of Shelby County, who's very, been very instrumental. Also want to thank Dr. Stewart, the Board of Trustees, for their vision and their support. We could not do this by ourselves. There's a lot of people in this building right now, in this room, that have helped us out financially. We thank you very much. But to make things happen, to make winners, to recruit the type of kids, it does take money. On each of your uh, table, there are some Falcon Club brochures. And Coach Reasoner started the Falcon Club about how many years ago, Coach? About 25? So it's been in existence a long time. But, but uh, we ask your help. Take, take the brochure with you. Take a look at it and mail that in. We also have some endowments on there. We have the Leon Davis endowment. We have the Coach Reasoner endowment. And we're also just started the Coach Spirey endowment. So there's a lot of opportunities for you. So thank you very much. In closing, I want to thank our inductees for what they've done for this university in the past. Congratulate them for their induction today and to wish them the best of the future as they continue to represent this great university. Thank you for attending this event. God bless and go Falcons. Thank you. It's now my pleasure to introduce the 15th president of the University of Montebello, Dr. John Stewart. President Stewart. Jim, um, I don't think anybody who's met Yasmin tonight would argue that um, she might be your greatest achievement. <laughs> so I wanted to add um, my thanks uh, to the Mark Acknowledge, to Mike Malone. Dr. Mike Malone's a great stint as our National Alumni Association President, and you and Janice have been great supporters of Falcon Athletics. So thank you very much for being here tonight.
Alex Ronnie, we can say new uh, president of our UM Foundation Board. It's Ronnie Jackson. He's here with us. Wait, Chris, thank you. Mm -hmm. So back to what athletics does for young people, which is the heart of this enterprise, right? It's why we're all here. And you know, if you think about the Greek model two or three thousand years ago of the student athlete, you know, it really, really um, touches on balance, right? And one of the things I can say about a lot of that graduates is they come out of here, the great experience they have with their faculty, they have balance. And they learn how to juggle time constraints, they learn how to deal with stress. And so I can remember the first time that I was an athlete in high school and I learned my limitations. I begged my high school football coach to let me return a punt in a varsity football game. And he said, Stuart, you're little and you're slow. Why in the world would I ever let you return a punt? I stayed on for half the season to let, I don't know why, who wants to return a punt, right? So finally, we're playing our crosstown rival. And he says, Stuart, get in there and return this punt. So I go in. And I feel the punt cleanly. I don't fumble it. I don't juggle it. And the all-state tackle from the other team hits me so hard that he knocks me out. But I wake up really quickly, and I'm still holding the ball, so I'm kind of proud of myself. <laughs> Except that I was the quarterback, and I walked to the other team's huddle and called the play. <laughs> True story. And one of the linemen on the other team was really nice. He held me by the elbow and walked me back to the correct huddle. <laughs> and Coach Reasoner, this, this story is for you. And those of you who play baseball under Coach Reasoner will understand when I tell it. And it's a really quick one. <clears throat> so I'm 17 years old and I'm playing shortstop against that same cross town rival after the football season, obviously. It's the springtime. And that all state tackle that knocked me out is the catcher on the other team. And he gets a walk or gets a single, I can't really remember. But he's on first base, and I'm 130 pound, dripping wet, shortstop. And <clears throat> there's a ground ball with the second baseman. So naturally, I spring into action. I'm going to turn two. I feel the ball, Jim, cleanly from the second baseman. And here's this all-state tackle barreling down the base pass toward me. He's going to knock me, knock me down, knock me out again. So I take a few steps and I just decide I'm not going to throw to first base. There's no way I can get out of the way in time. So I go way off the base pass. Well, he comes out of the base pass and knocks me over. And he doesn't just knock me over again. He hits me so hard that I end up in the outfield. And me being 17 and being embarrassed, his team's laughing, my team's laughing, my girlfriend's in the stand, she's laughing. I couldn't think of anything better to do than to take the ball out of the glove and beam him right between the eyes. With <laughs> and Coach Reasoner, you'll be proud of this. I jumped on his back and we had a, a bench clearing brawl right there. On the end of <laughs> so here I am on the back of an all-state tackle. And I'm doing this and he's trying to get me off his back. And back then they didn't throw you out of the game for that kind of stuff. Go figure. So, Fight stops, kids go back to the dugouts, and at the end of the game, we win. I was three for four. So we win. I'm walking to my bus, the other team's fans are yelling, kids are throwing stuff, it was pretty ugly. And I promised myself at that moment that that guy, he was going to end up doing some really demeaning occupation. He was just a thug. He wasn't going to end up doing anything worthy. And I was going to make something of my life. So the other day I get home and I turn on the TV. I wasn't feeling that great. And there's that guy on TV. You know who that guy is now? That beat me up right there on the infield? And there was no question, he really did beat me up. That guy is world famous heart surgeon, Dr. Mehmet Oz. <laughs> true, true story. You know Dr. Oz on the open and all that? So Dr. Oz used to be a really big guy. He beat the snot out of me on second place. <laughs> that's Coach Reasoner, that's for you. 
50, 50 of our 250 or so undergraduate student athletes had a 4.0 grade point average last fall. And almost, almost all the rest of them had really, really good grades, probably over a 3.0. When I was an undergraduate, I'd had to go three semesters to add up to a 4.0. So all I want to tell you is thank you for being here. Thank you for everything you mean to us. And please, please continue your support of Falcon, the Falcon Club and Falcon Athletics. And like Mark said, go Falcons. Thank you. Great stuff, Dr. Stewart. So, who is ready to get started? Come on. You ready to get going? Let's do this. Let's do this. All right. So, our first inductee, I have a funny story about this. I'm, a, I'm from upstate New York. I'm from Syracuse, New York. You probably can tell if you haven't heard me before because I have an accent to you, most likely, even though I've lived here for 13 years. So, 13 years ago, in August of 2002, I'm sitting in my baseball coach in New York's office, and I say, I want to transfer down south. And a guy who's already in the Hall of Fame here, Jeff Seeger, had told me about this school, Montevello. And so I made a call down to Coach Reasoner, and we set up a tryout for me to come down and visit. And when I flew down from New York, the guy who picked me up was actually our next inductee that we're gonna start with tonight, Matt Mitchell. So, if you know anything about Matt, he is, as many people know, pound for pound one of the best baseball players, not just at Montevello, but that you'll ever meet. He's a two-time All-Gulf South Conference selection at two different positions during his playing career, which spanned from 1999 to 2000. Matt was selected first team All-Conference as both an outfielder and as a relief pitcher in each of his two seasons. He finished his playing career with a 367 batting average, 21 home runs, while driving in 101 runs. He also registered a 3.03 .03 ERA, earned run average, in his career as a relief pitcher while recording 17 saves. It's all around, all around. The second most career saves recorded in Montevallo's program history. He also picked off 20 base runners during his career, which ranks him second in program history, and he helped the Falcons compile a program record 44 wins during his senior season, where the team was in the top 10, if not the top five in the country nationally for most of that season. Matt also served as assistant coach, which is where I met him, for Montevallo after his playing career. So now, for the first inductee tonight, here in 2016, let's bring up from Hueytown, Alabama, to Montevallo, Matt Mitchell. But he 
not hate his, his mortal brother, and that's uh, Bobby Morris. Uh, we've been friends since the first grade. Uh, he's here tonight. Uh, we've been friends for over 30 years. He's been with the, the ups and the downs, the good and the bad. Bobby, I, I love you. Next is a uh, very important uh, person to me for a, for a long time as well. Uh, it's Rick Patterson. He was my high school coach at Hueytown High School. He's still the high school coach at Hueytown today. Uh, he's a legend in, the, in, in, in high school sports. He has over 500 wins. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be a part of some of them. But I was part of his first one. I was on his very first team. Uh, the things that, that he taught me, the things that he helped me with, uh, went beyond baseball. Uh, when after I left UBI, I would come back for two reasons. One reason was whether I was struggling uh, in, on, on the field, off the field, in the classroom. I was going to stop by because I knew where he was. He was going to be on that field cutting the grass, picking weeds. He, he, he was going to be at the, at the field. And we would have we had countless talk, talks over the, over the years. And I don't even know if I even mentioned what was actually wrong at the time, but it didn't matter. He could he could make me feel better. And uh, coach, I love you. thank you. And obviously, I couldn't stand here tonight and not thank the man that brought me to the University of Montevallo and that's being Coach Reasoner. Um, when I transferred, when I left UAB, uh, that summer I was looking for a place to play, made calls, people made calls for me. Uh, me and my dad, we drove down here, we got the coach in the old office that obviously isn't there anymore. We sat there, you know how Coach was talking to you, he had those glasses on, he pulled them down, he peered over the top of them, and he said, Son, I can promise you three things if you come here. I can promise you you'll be a better baseball player, you'll get a degree, and you'll leave your man. And I, two out of three ain't bad. I'm still working on that. He did a good job. Um, but, but Coach, I, I just, I, I'm just so, so thankful for, for Coach Reasoner for giving me the opportunity that, that, that. Others would not. Um, I'm, I'm thankful for um, the opportunity he, he gave me, giving me a chance to play here and be a part of this special university. Thank you, Coach. I'm going back up and take one more thing about Coach. I'm sorry. I had a funny story about him. Sorry. I know I'm running long, so I, I'm, I'm sorry. When uh, after you, know, you have your year-end meetings after the season's over, and after my junior year, we're sitting there, and Coach looks at me, and Coach Phil Phillips, who was our assistant coach, he's obviously sitting there with us, and I was a walk-on. I had no money when I came here. I just was a walk-on, and uh, Coach looks at me at the, the end of the year meeting, and he, and he says, "You know, uh, I just want you to know you're getting the biggest increase of anybody." I was like, I hope so, because I got zero this year. So, <laughs> Person, um, I, I would like to to uh, recognize for, for on, on tonight is my dad, Jimmy Mitchell. Um, I talked about the, the one. I, I told you there were two reasons I came home when things wasn't going well. One reason was to go see coach, and another reason was to go hit with dad because if that was nobody knew my swing better than he did. So when we would come home, I mean, he would, we would go hit, we would talk, we would argue, we would fight. I mean, that's, that's what we did. So, but I, I owe him anything that, that I am. I owe him. Uh, I owe to him. He, he was my teacher, my coach. Most of all, it's my dad. And, uh, 
you know, he was he was hard on me. People he used to say, ask me all the time, how could you play for, for Rick Patterson or Bob Reesner? I said, hell, I live with Jimmy Mitchell. I mean, that was, that was how. There, was, there, there was no transition. So. But he just instilled in me a, a couple of things that I still, that go beyond sports. That, you know, it, 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 it takes no ability to hustle or play hard. And that's what I prided myself on was just play hard. But it takes no ability. Dad, I love it. My beautiful mother, Vicki Mitchell. Total voice of reason, okay? Because of those arguments that we had with with Dad, obviously somebody had to, to calm everything down. That's what my mom did. She was she was my ultimate cheerleader, uh, my ultimate fan, and she was the perfect baseball player's mom because she had a genuine way. Of making you feel better when you knew you were terrible at that time, <laughs> but that's what that's what moms do. And mom, thank you, and I love you. I'm trying to. Help you, I'm sorry. All right. Uh, I'm excited that this has happened at this time in my life because of my kids are old enough to. To understand, to be here, to to, to, to take part in, in, in this honor, and then I, I do truly consider it an honor. Uh, my wife, obviously, she did. She never saw me play at all. You know, we'll run into people down time, time every once in a while, and they'll bring up the playing career. Well, at least now she knows maybe that I wasn't lying. So, <laughs> all right, I'm going to wrap it up right now. In closing, there, uh, there's two two more people I'd like to to uh, to recognize, and uh, one was a, a a friend of mine that uh, that truly took me under his wing when I was a freshman in high school. His name was Stephen Duncan. Don't pass away probably 10 years ago, I guess. I mean, he's been gone several years now, but he was the first person that truly taught me how to be a leader. He took me under his wing uh, how, to, uh, how to set an example. And I'm forever grateful for the time I got to spend with him. Uh, Last but not least, is, uh, I'd like to recognize my grandfather, T.Z. Parsons, also no longer with us. Uh, he never saw me play here at Montevallo. He never saw me play at Huey Town. But the, he, he passed away when I was 14. And, but that man loved baseball as much as anybody. The talks that we would have, the nicknames that he gave for me, the sayings that he had. I'd strike somebody out and he'd yell, T.O.B., trot on back. Because that, that, that's just the way he was. And he loved this game. He loved watching all of his grandkids play. And I'm just grateful for the time that I got to spend with him. I'm so grateful for this honor. Thank you and good night. So our next inductee here in the 2016 UM Hall of Fame inductions is Kyra Melton. Kyra was a two-time All Gulf South Conference selection during her playing career, which spanned from 1999 to 2003, where she finished her playing career with 1,061 career points and 893 career rebounds, placing her third in the record book for the most career rebounds in program history.
Kara also recorded 345 blocks in her career, which gives her the most in program history. She recorded a team high 104 block shots as a junior in 2001 and 2, which is tied for the most block shots in a single season here at UM. Her 11 block shots against West Georgia as a junior placed her second in the record book for most block shots in a single game. Kara averaged a team high 13.1 points per game and a team high 10.6 rebounds per game as a senior in the 2002-2003 campaign. Our next inductee here in 2016, Kara Melton. Come on. Work hard again. 
Um, I need to be thankful to my teammates, especially those when I rebounded and went throw the ball back out to them. Um, one of my teammates is here tonight. Hey, Janine, thank you for being here. Um, also, I need to give a shout out to Sidelines Rhythm Bar. They used to have these 25 <laughs> so many nights. They like to be. is Hansel Gunn, men's basketball player here at Montevallo. He enrolled at the university alongside teammate Lonnie Edwards as the first two African-American student athletes at this school. With his playing career spanning from 1969 to 1971, Gunn is a well-respected alumnus of the University of Montevallo and is recognized for blazing a path for future African-American student athletes here at this university. Gunn spent 39 years as a superintendent, principal, teacher, and coach at elementary schools, middle schools, and high schools in his professional career. He also earned both a bachelor's degree and a master's degree in physical education here at the University of Montevallo, our third inductee and a trailblazer himself here in 2016, Mr. Hansel Gunn. Come on up. Live with me 
as I walk those brick city, as I call it, going to class, going to the cafeteria, going to the library, going to, to the gym, the student union building, walking across in this time, hearing racial slurs. Why are you here? Hearing the critics talking about you. Go back to where you come from. Yet God had a plan for my life that they didn't understand. Hearing them say to me, you don't belong here. At many times, I thought about quitting. That's the star. Possums thrown into my classroom, into our, our dormitory. Lonnie can attest to this. <coughs> Why? Why would somebody take a possum and throw it into your room while you study? But that's the ill that you hear in society during that time. And I want you to think about the beginning. We see things the way they are now. But this didn't happen ways. And we were part of this. And God chose me as a pioneer to come to be a part of this. That's the thing that I want to be self here From Hansel Gunn. And I'm so proud to see some of the things that have been transpired since that time. And as I go through that time, I think about better times were when we were on the basketball court. All of a sudden now it's a we. It's a we. We love it. We're winning. The first time during that period that Montevallo had had a winning season. When we were on those teams. And it was a we. We love you. We high fives. We hug you. But as soon as that season, that game is over, you're back to your playing old Hassel Dunn again. Get back into your place. That's the thing that I share and I look at. Did I want to attack? Yes, I did. And I even wore the number 42, Jackie Robinson, because he was my hero. And I know what he went through. And I sat and I looked at that. And it hurt. It really hurt deeply. All I wanted was an education. And I cried out, why? Why do you hate me? You don't know me. God sent me here to work in this part of his kingdom to bring about a social change. And I just wanted education. Why is there hate? But that was doing the time. That's what Hansel Gunn is all about in coming here. And the great joy of my life. As I sat here and looked today, and as you awake down and we forward ourselves to the to 2016. Forget all the past and the things that happened in the past. We have unity. Look at the diversity. I would go to ball game during that time and you would see white on one side and black on one side. But we were there, but you don't see that now. That's a change. And the great joy that I have to see the integration here of Montefiore teams, not because as African Americans we have the skills and we can jump and we can run, but because of our intellect, we are on teams. And because of the fact that we have character. That's what Hansel Gunn and London Edwards is all about. We portrayed that. That's the legacy that I want to leave here at Montefiore as being a pioneer. And for those that are followed, that's what we perform now. We can do it on the field, but we can also do it in that class. Yes, I graduated here. And I want folks to, to know that. That's what challenged me to see those times. And as I look at things that are going on today, that's special to me. Now, we had some fun during that time. I had some challenges. God had created me, put me in this thing. He said, Hansel, I want you to work in that part of my kingdom. 
fought him a lot, but hey, we were here to do that, to be integrate, to integrate this university athletically. And as I sat and looked at that, I thought about some good times we had, some bad times, some scary times we had. Like the times when we were playing basketball and we came through and we stopped in Carmel, Alabama, 1969. Please, no one stopped in Carmel, Alabama in 1969 if you're an African American with an all-white team. But Lonnie and I did that. And we walked into at 12 o'clock, I don't know why Joe did this, we walked into this place to eat. And we sat there and we looked out and Lonnie and I were the only two African Americans there. And they made it plain that night. You don't belong here. And I never heard so much of the N-word in my life. And I was hungry at the time. But then again, I got up and I said, all of a sudden, I'm not hungry. I went out and I left my teammates and a coach and everybody that. I went out to the car and I prayed so hard that I ever prayed in my life. Lord, get me out of there. That I was proud, all the team came out and we left. That was the, the time that we were in. And we didn't quit. We hung with it. Because what we were dealing with was bigger than just Lonnie and myself. It's today, it's what I see here. That's what makes me so proud. I'm seeing the fruits of my labor when I can see what we have here. But then there was some joyful time that I had being here, being the only. Black, so okay, everybody knew who you were. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? And we were popular in the center of the community. The people supported us like they supported Joe Lewis when he was fighting. Well, we go into the ball game because that's when Lonnie's playing basketball there. And they all was cheering for us, and we were winning. We were happy. And one thing about that, that was a joyous time, was that all of the young ladies there, People, they invited us on Sundays to come to church and they would have dinner for us. I mean, I ate so much. <laughs> so many dinners. And I found out the reason these mothers would invite us over that they had us to marry their daughters. <laughs> and we didn't turn it down, we went to eat. <laughs> but then with this one lady, and I tell you what, I never forget this. We had a nice service there at church. She invited us over and up on the had a great game that night. We were talking on the campus and we were sitting there and she was talking to us. She and her daughter were sitting there talking. And we looked at the food that they had on the table. And I, all of a sudden she found out that we wasn't interested in marrying her daughter. And that lady got up and took all the food off the table. <laughs> you all go back to the campus. <laughs> That's what we were dealing with. Joyous. And we had a lot of pranks played on us, like you said, I was talking about possum throwing in the classroom. They would really light fire at our doors and what have you, trying to run them out, come on out, all that stuff was going on. And there was payback time. And Ronnie may have shared this in this week, but I was sitting there one night about 10 degrees. And you talking about cold. Even when you had the uh, ice cubes wearing overcoats, it was just that cold at night. And Ronnie and I went down and we pulled the fire on them. And all of them went out in the Andres and everywhere, the outside out there, and Lonnie and I was sitting up in the car just relaxing, just laughing and all that thing. Trial on the door. And even today, they have no clue who pulled that trial. <laughs> That's the joy that I love. <laughs> and let you know that it may have been Robin Mears. You may be the one who put that possum in my room. We don't pull that power on. <laughs> Robin is one of I wanted to share that with you to let you know that some good times here being a pioneer. You start something. That's good as a bad time. But as long as your good days outweigh your bad days, then you won't. I want to thank tonight my wife, very supportive. My brother, for the reason I ended up marrying her. She came to a ball game. She was at AM and we ended up being married here and 40 plus years, and one of has really been good to me. Two great children, Jonathan, who almost went to Montebello here. He played basketball in Oklahoma, but he went to Montebello because he wanted to beat Montebello. I don't know why he wanted to do that. So what have you. And my daughter, Leslie, uh, who Mark knows, boy, she's very persistent. She's the human resource director of our business. We have my wife and I own a private school. 
this serves in Troy Berlin. She's involved in the business and what have you. And then my family, I have a lot of them here. My brother is sitting here. Uh, my mother couldn't make it tonight. And when I first came on campus, she brought me here back in the 60s and what have you. And she's 89 and approaching 90 years old. She just couldn't make it. But she taught me the value, the strength that I need in order to survive. And I look at my brother and my sister, and we are all competitive. They have their careers. He's, he's in communication, but he's always here to support. And that's what this is all about, that family support is what I've had, the reason I'm standing here today. And I have my cousins uh, that's here, my nephew, uh, his wife, pastor, and praying for us, involved in that church, and what have you, and friends and family, my sister-in-law, Valerie, who graduated from here. After I come following our footsteps, doing well, great alumnus that are here, and so many other people. And I look at George Armstrong and his wife, family has come on, and Billy and Lonnie, teammates that played with me, all a part of it. Chip, nephew is here, and I think about Ryan as I made a crack by him, but he's really involved with me because being an owner of a private school, he's really the executive director over there and working totally with me because he's Montevallo. He's a hell of a lot of Montevallo. That's what you're dealing with. But there's two people. This is emotional. You've got to work with me on this. Not that I'm not here. That's the reason that I'm standing here today. That's Bill Jones, the basketball coach who recruited me. Gave me a chance to make history. Could have chosen others. But he saw something in me that he didn't see in others. I want you to come and be the first to hear. And I know what he used to see. The things that he may have heard doing that, but he didn't matter. And he was like a father to me. And I want to thank you, Coach Jones. And I know you're going to have us spotted down now for giving me a chance to be one of the first African Americans to integrate this university and to play basketball. And I think about Coach Davis, the athletic director, accepted me well. I had to make sure that I was in his class. He would make sure that I do the right thing. Coach Flemings. Basketball. And the second man, is just so special to me. I was struggling being the first African American to play on the baseball team here. A lot of you got your championship and all, but you look at the first. Not only on the team, but in the whole league. You think Jackie Robson went through some things? That's what I mean. The name that I would call him. And you couldn't attack back. The racial slur was that was. And I wanted to quit. But Dean Wilkinson stood up and said, no, no. <coughs> Took me aside. Said, we're going to make it. I had with him. Times I didn't make the traveling team. He would take me out on that field and hit balls to me in 90 degrees weather. Why? Wasn't his son? Because he cared. Folks talked about him. Why are you doing it? But that's Dean Wilson, young man. And his daughter is here tonight. And Beth, would you stand, please? I just want to say this to you in front of all of the folks that are here. Your dad was a godsend for me. I'm here today in Hunter because of your dad. God bless him, and I love him to death. And I know he's smiling down and saying, Go have for our good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's what this legacy for me is all about. And in closing, let me say this. No one said that life was fair. Life was just a small speck of time that exists between two eternities. And it's what you do with your life in that time. What God gives us to do with it in that time that make a difference. I came during that time. I served. I sought and I served. And what I'm looking for is during that day, it's God to say, well done.
that hand, so that was, that was amazing. DJ Towns is our next inductee, and our fourth here in the evening. And DJ was a part of a turnaround that happened here under the current head coach, Danny Young, who's 2005-16 will actually be nominated, or uh, will actually be inducted tonight. But DJ was named first team all Gulf South Conference selection and was named the Gulf South Conference Tournament Most Valuable Player of the Year during his playing career with Span in 2003 to 2005. He finished his playing career with 817 career points and averaged a career high 14.8 points per game during his junior season. He helped the Falcons advance to the NCAA Division II Sweet 16 for the first time in program history during his playing career. And he was on that first team with Danny Young, who's still making runs today. And that team really turned around the basketball program here into what it is today, which is one of the most prestigious, premier basketball programs in all of Division II. And I remember DJ coming down in the summer before that first season. DJ, you were out of shape. <laughs> but you worked hard. And you got back into shape. And you helped lead that team to do something that had never done before, which is make it to the Sweet 16. And so, just personally, because I was a part of that season and seeing what you guys did, you would that team. I just want to say thank you, and I want to welcome you now to the Montebello Athletics Hall of Fame. Cinda Walker. Cinda was named a first team 
National Association of Intercollegiate Athletics All-American during her playing career. We span from 1985 to 1986. She was also named the NAIA District 27 Player of the Year during her career. Walkley finished with 260 kills during her senior season and was second on the team with 367 digs. She also finished with 39 service aces as a senior and led the Falcons to a 38-5 finish in a trip to the NAIA National Tournament during her senior campaign. In two seasons with the Falcons, she recorded 475 kills, 86 service aces, and 84 total blocks. Wow. She also served as an assistant coach for the Falcons after her playing career. Our next inductee here in 2016, Cinda Walkley. Volleyball wasn't on my radar. My coaches, 
um, at that point, I guess, recognized raw talent because I knew nothing of the game. Um, I was going through the, the um, tryouts just by what they said to do. Stand there and do this, and I would do it. Um, and I made the team, and, and um, things progressed from there. Um, the next people I think I would acknowledge are my teammates, who are also my friends. Um, you're kind of given, uh, as a team, 12 to 15 friends that you do everything with. Um, especially as you progress in higher levels, um, you spend a lot of time with those folks. Um, you laugh with them, you cry with them, you succeed with them, you fail with them. They become a part of your family, an extension. Um, and I definitely wouldn't be here. I stand here today on the shoulders of all my teammates. Um, if it weren't for them, I wouldn't be here at all. Um, next, I think of my coaches. Um, coach O'Brien was my high school coach, and, and Coach Tim Carrick assisted her. Um, they recognized my gift in volleyball right away. And my you know, coach Tintero would often tell me, um, you know, it's a shame your volleyball is not your first love because it's what you're best at. And uh, I learned to love that and appreciate that. And, and I learned to love the sport and, and to really endeavor to do well at that. Um, when I went to junior college, Coach Holloman took over. Um, and I learned a little bit of a higher level of, of game and play. Um, but she was pretty mild um, compared to who brought me to Montevallo, and that was Coach Beverly Warren. Um, well, I remember when I first showed up on campus, she told us all to go to the dorms, and we were here a couple of weeks before school even started, so there was nobody on campus. Go to the dorms, unpack, and pack your bags for a weekend in Florida. We're going to go put on a, a, a volleyball camp. So we all follow directions. We get down to Florida, and she says, now this is the way it's going to go. We're going to start off early in the morning, and we're going to do some workouts. Um, we'll start with cardio, and then we're going to put on the morning session of the camp, and at lunchtime we're going to do strength training. And then we're going to put on the afternoon session of the camp, and in the afternoon we're going to have a full practice. And I thought, oh, so the ones who live get to play. <laughs> we showed up that morning on the track, and the first thing out of her mouth was stretch out and take a mile warm up. And I thought, oh dear God. <laughs> um, but she had an incredible talent, and that was pulling everything you had out of you. Um, she helped us all to play to our truest potential. Um, sometimes you would be right on the edge of thinking, I've, I've, I've had it, I've done enough, I can't do anymore. And she knew when to push in and when to pull back and make you the best you could possibly be. Um, we talk about coaches, everybody talks about coaches and how they build more than just strong athletes, they build strong characters. Um, they develop all sorts of, of character traits in youngsters, perseverance, um, communication skills, work ethics. You can go on and on and on, and, and the coaches that I was fortunate to be under um, did all of that for me as well. Finally, the universities, the institutions. Um, Montevallo asked me to come and play, and, and gave me that opportunity, but they also encouraged me not only to be excellent on the court, but also to be excellent in my classes. You know, we were accountable to our, our classes and keeping our grades up. And, and at times that was very challenging because um, I, I think I said to one of my teammates at one time, I didn't know I came to play volleyball and go to school on the side because we were in so many tournaments and so many games that we would be out of classes. So we had study groups and, and work groups and, and things to keep us up and, and going, and it took perseverance. It took dedication. Um, it was said earlier that the universities create balance in people. Um, absolutely. And it was said earlier that one of the things that this university does is it produces, when you're through and finished, you have an outstanding young man or young woman. And when I left here, I had balance, I had direction, I had a degree, I had glory days that I look fondly back on and tell stories about um, today. Um, and I'm still in the, the career field that began with the education and the commitment I had here. Um, so it, it's been a wonderful journey, um, lots of folks to thank, um, you know, and I'm, I'm thankful to everybody. Uh, that I mentioned, and again, to the university and the committee for, for having us all here tonight. So thank you.
next inductee is Kevin Gardens. Kevin was a three-time All Gulf South Conference selection and a two-time NCAA Division II All South Region selection during his playing career, which spanned from 2001 to 2004. He also was named to the Gulf South Conference All Tournament Team twice and was named to the conference's All Decade Team following his playing career. He scored 24 goals during his career, including eight game-winning goals. Clutch. Kevin finished with 63 career points, including a team-high 23 points during his sophomore season. Our next inductee here in 2016 Kevin Garnes. do stay in touch with, I meet up with, and I'll stay in touch with forever. Uh, this really is, it's a magical place. It's a little place that nobody knows about back where I'm from. Where? Yeah, Alabama. 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 But it's, it's a great place. I had, the first month was terrible, but the rest of my four years was absolutely fantastic, and I'll cherish every memory that I had here. All the people I met, thank you so much to the coaching staff, Chadwick, all the athletic training staff, um, all the professors that I had. I wasn't a very good student, Jim, so. but my teammates helped me through. Um, my freshman year roommate over there, Seb, thanks for coming. Raven, thanks for coming. Craig, thanks for coming. Um, and thanks for everybody for organising this. Paula, wherever you are, great job. Fantastic. I know you did a lot of work. I wasn't very responsive, I was pretty used to it. <laughs> thank, you to, thank you to the president, thank you to the athletic director, thank you everybody, and um, uh, I'll see you down at the bar. <laughs> Alright, 
Uh, so our next inductees are from the 2005-2006 men's basketball program. 2005-06 men's basketball team here at UM became the school's first team to win the NCAA Division II Regional Championship and advanced to the Elite Eight. First time in program history, mind you. The team set a program record at that time with 29 victories and claimed the Gulf South Conference East Division Championship during the regular season. Team members included Greg Brown, Grant Urbanski, Ronnie Phillips, Jordan Hutchinson, Robert Sharp, Jamil German, James Hall, Hall of Famer Marcus Kennedy, Logan Carden, Justin Harden, Darren Robinson, and Dayton Miller. Coaches included head coach Danny Young and assistant coaches Adam Burgess, Josh Golden, and Jake Hedrick. Team manager was Marshall Trotter. Our next inductees is the team, the men's basketball team, from the 05-06 campaign for the University of Montgomery.
All right. Our next inductee is another team, and it happens to be the same year as this basketball team really culminated the turnaround that Danny Young brought to Montebello. Greg Goff brought a turnaround for the baseball program. I actually remember um, being a part of Coach Goff's first team, and uh, he had this thing where he wanted us to take pride in the university. I, I loved it, but he had this thing where there were guys on the team that would wear Alabama, maybe Auburn gear around campus. And uh, Coach let us know right away that that was not going to continue. And if you were going to wear that gear, he was going to basically make you pay for it. Maybe you'd get dropped off at 5 a.m. in the morning in Jemison and have to find your way back to class. I don't know. But the point was, you were going to take pride in this program. And you knew that from the second he arrived on campus in 2003. He let us know that the goal was to go to the College World Series. And he painted a vision for that team that wouldn't see its way through until this team right here. But for me, even though it was years after I played here, it was so amazing to watch it happen because he told us that it would happen. He painted the vision back in 2003. And there's a lot of other stories I can tell, Coach, that will always stick with me. And in anything I do in leadership nowadays, I always think about how can I paint a vision that I can get my team to believe in because of how you did that for our team back then. So this team, 2006, became the school's first team to win the NCAA Division II Region Championship compete in the NCAA National Baseball Championship as well. The team finished with 43 victories, which tied the mark for the second most wins in a single season in program history. The team also claimed the Gulf South Conference East Division Championship during the regular season. This team had members from Miller Dawson to Chris Stanham, Jared Myrick, Aaron Gillett, Giap, sorry. Zachary Andrews, who's a Hall of Famer already. Garrett Mims, Josh Davis, Justin, Dustin Rhodes, Derek Simmons, Daniel Tankersley, Rusty Mask, Daniel Furuto, J.D. Pruitt, Brandon Aldrich, Jason Sheehan, B.J. Holloway, Dave Nanny, Travis Foltz, John Chambly, Chris Wiley, Brantley Clay, Ryan Norman, Francisco Perez, Adam Yo, Jeremy Joyce, Heath Wilson, Brett Dunn, and Justin Mullen. <laughs> coaches included head coach Greg Goff and assistant coaches Jeff Smith and Aubrey Blackwell. Our next inductees here at the 2016 Hall of Fame inductions are the 2006 College World Series, University of Montebello baseball team. Professional. <laughs> <laughs> I think I take us anywhere. Nothing's changed. 
baseball program and it was a special opportunity to share what these guys did. Um, I found out a long time ago it wasn't about the coaching. It was about the relationships. And uh, this is the one team that I have in my office today that I have a big picture of as you see the World Series. And everybody I recruit, everybody that I talk to, I talk about these group of guys. Some good, some bad. You know, I had some guys walk in my office and they say, Coach, that guy's got his hat crooked. I said, Hey, that guy was all American. <laughs> <laughs> but, but for me, I've been crying since, since I left this morning. I had my daughter Kylie here, and it's so funny that, that I used to bring my girls and used to let them hang out with all these guys, and they were in the dugout with them, and, and now I'm keeping my girls at home away from my <laughs> I learned real fast, it's not good. Uh, all I want to say to this group of guys that are here tonight, it was an honor for me to be here, to be a part of this opportunity. You know, coaches are supposed to help players grow. This group of guys right here helped me grow. I left, after that year, a better man. I learned what relationships were. I learned what courage was. I learned staring failure down, and I learned that if you come together, you love one another, you keep believing in one another, great things happen. God answers prayers. It was a great, great opportunity, a great chance to coach these guys in 2006, and it's an awesome night. Thank you very much for having us. Two 
Knight helped develop the Park and Recreation Program for the City of Montevallo in 1973 and currently owns the ABC Princeton Daycare in Birmingham, Alabama. Our next inductee here in 2016, Arthur Ott Knight. Sweet, I promise you. I told him to be short and simple. Everybody in my group agreed that that's why I am short and simple. <laughs> but what I want to talk about tonight, we were fortunate enough, first of all, I appreciate the honor. I appreciate a lot of people I know here I've seen for 40 years because I've been around my vow that long, probably since everybody came here. Uh, the first person I want to recognize tonight is one of my former teammates, Eddie Freed. But over here, Eddie was captain of the basketball and baseball team with me. We, we were left in that one conference the same year before some of you people were born, so I, you, know, you wouldn't know about this. You haven't been there. <laughs> also, while I'm at this, I want, there's two people sitting up front here that don't get a lot of, uh, as much pay as I think they should. I've seen this thing from the day the dirt was brought out. Got Leon Davis sitting here and Bob Reese. They built this program. <laughs> And sometimes people don't get the full credit for what they do. I used to see Leon Davis here. We'd be at midnight, he'd still be here. He's had, he's had more laws at the University of Montevallo than any man I've seen in 40 years, I promise you. Anytime you came around, and one thing I'd always say, and all the guys would say the same thing, you'd go to his office anytime, he'd always talk to you. A lot of people you can't, a lot of people you, know, you don't have that kind of connection. He's that kind of fellow. And you know what kind of administrator was brought along Coach Rich and these people. He took baseball to another level. And everybody they've hired at season has added to the program. And I've seen that, like I say, for 40 years. I saw Hansel uh, speech a few minutes ago. Hansel, you know, we've seen it all from the time it started. But you guys have done a great job. These two guys here will be commended. Mike, you're sitting beside two great people right there. You guys stand up for you deserve it. <laughs> long night, but you know, like I say, I've seen this thing from the time we started the city recreation program, the whole thing I've seen, all these people come in. I saw Danny Young, who's probably the best coach of Division Two, when he only had one player. Everybody talks about playing, he's sitting in front of my business for not one player. He's the head coach of University of Montevallo, is that true, coach? I see you back there, speak up. You know what, <laughs> you know what I always tell you, I'm with you winter time, right? <laughs> you got your butt beat tonight, I don't want to talk to you. Seriously, he's great. This guy's having so much. They were lucky to have him. Probably won't keep him too long. Some of the vision ones will come knock on their door and get him. So we're going to have to do something to keep him, I assure you. But listen, I know it's been a long night. I appreciate the award. God bless you. So the next award is the Leon Davis Award. We just heard a little bit about Leon from Ah, but what you may not know is Leon was not only the athletic director here, but he was also the first ever basketball coach here. So I actually want to do something kind of neat. Let's bring you up, Leon, to give out the Leon G. Davis Award. I've also seen 
the complexion of the University of Monopoly change, of course, it was out on the college when I came here. I've seen the complexion of the college, the university change, and uh, I've also seen a tremendous change for the better in athletics. Because when I came, it was really pioneering. Council talked about pioneering tonight. We really pioneered, and of course, when I came, we already had uh, baseball, golf, tennis, and cross country. Uh, I came in 1963, and Myra Call Gymnasium was built that first year I'm here, and I found out in March of 1964, we're going to have a basketball team this fall, September. We were in a league with Troy, Jacksonville, North Alabama, West Alabama, and those people. And most of them were winning about 20 games a year in basketball when we came. And I'm not asking for any sympathy. But things have changed tremendously. I don't envy anything that's happening because I'm, I wish I could bask in the sunshine of what's happening in that place today. And it's just great. And I thank all of you that are not a part of contributing to that. I'm certainly honored to have an award named in my, have my name on an award that's given to a person who's gone out as a graduate of this institution and distinguished himself as Mike Dutton had. This kind man has touched the lives of many young men throughout his career. Just a little bit about Mike's situation. Mike was a student at Alabama Christian College in Montgomery first year we had basketball here and he wanted to come to play basketball and we talked and I told Mike that I would be glad to have him come and one of the things he said is I want to be a coach. I want to learn how to run a basketball program. I said you can come and be a part of our program, do everything the players do. I'll even use you as an assistant coach and when I watch a basketball game today and I see on TV where, and I know Coach Young can, can not identify with this either, but I see about a head coach called timeout, and he walked out on the middle of the floor, and about six assistants follow him out there, and they have a conference. Coach, what all those people do in basketball? I was the coach, I was the only coach we had here, and I was teaching the football the whole bit at that time. And Mike was my assistant coach, so you can imagine how, what an impression Mike and I made when we had a basketball game and we walked out and I conferred with Mike. I really always thought when I called down, I, time out, I knew what I was calling time out for. I didn't have to have somebody tell me and you know, let's confer about it. But anyway, maybe that's why I'm not coaching now. <laughs> but anyway, Mike Dutton is a person that draws people to him. I think an, attest an attestation of that is the fact that he has kept in contact with a number of his high school classmates, people that he was in school with, and over the years, and this has been a span of a lot of years, they have remained friends and close, very close friends. But all those people here tonight in support of my good please stand. A lot of these people... He coached for a number of years, and because of money, he decided to become an administrator, which he did for a number of years. I don't know how many I'm not too concerned about that, but I know he went back to his own high school and administrated for a number of years and another place, and he just could not stand being, not being a coach. So he goes back into coaching, and he's coached at a number of high schools. The longest tenure, I guess, he had in the high school was 17 years at Benson Valley High School. And I think this is a great tribute. You'll have to agree this is a great tribute. The gymnasium at Benson Valley High School has Mike Dutton's name on it. He's to be commended for that. That's the kind of impression he made. 
on that community in 15, 17 years. Since he left Benson Valley, he still goes to a number of places, and I think he's retired a couple of times. <laughs> and last year, I believe you were assistant, uh, he was a, a volunteer coach at Hayden High School, is that right? Did they renew your contract? <laughs> <laughs> this man cannot, could not stand not being the coach. And again, he has influenced a great number of people. And I am so pleased that we're being able to salute Mike Dutton tonight by presenting him with this award. Mike, would you come up here? Essentially, I heard it on CNN the other day. <laughs> it sounded good. I thought it might be something that might work out. Did that sound right? Okay. Y'all are a nice audience. But I came here in the fall of 1966 as a walk-off, as Coach David saluted to. And I wasn't a very good player. I think I was a D-plus kind of player. But he didn't cut me. He didn't cut me. He gave me a chance to hang around. And the first day here, and I'm going to say this, I know everybody's tired and needing coffee and uh, getting ready to go. But the first day on this campus was almost my last. And I know all of you have probably had experiences where you, the first day there's some traumatic event and things like that. Well, here, I'm going to tell you what happened to me. I came in from Alabama Christian, a school of 250 students. I knew everybody. I didn't know but Mike Malone and Janice Tarrant and a few other people here in Hollowell. So I'm in registration. I had my daddy's blue Buick. He let me have it for the week. I didn't have a car. <coughs> Drive up to Bill Gray's Hall. Registration. I wanted to be a cop. Well, I walk in to registration. I see the chair this physical education department. So I go up to him. My daddy always taught me to shake hands and give my name. So I thought Mike Dutton. I'm transferred from Alabama Christian College, and I want to be a coach. Well, have y'all ever seen, I know you have in movies and things like that, another big word, an ephemeral silence, just a brief. And then this woman exploded on me. We don't train coaches at, the, at Alabama College. We train physical educators, son. I suggest that you change your major immediately. Or maybe even think of another school. Boy, that's a positive welcome. <laughs> I was thinking it takes 45 minutes to get to East Lake and burn him. And I may be up there hanging out with my buddies. Because I'm sitting there, I was embarrassed, told him because of what happened. And I did what she said. I changed my major to history and my in physical education. And had a wonderful, wonderful two, year, two years here at the university. Valley. I want to thank Dr. Stewart for the job you're doing in Central Alabama. This is a wonderful school, uh, helping so many people. In our family here, we have, how many folks, raise your hand if you're a graduate of the University, University of Mile Valley. And my two buddies, lifelong buddies here, Bradley Clay, his son-in-law, Bobby John, Billy Coffey, not leaving that guy alone, Janice, great representative. But I couldn't thank it. Athletic Director Mark Richards, thank you 
for what you're doing. A terrific job. And this school has such a wonderful academic reputation. Athletics is really because of the hard work of this man. And let me finish by saying about Dr. Davis, Coach Davis to me. You know, in this business of coaching and dealing with athletics, there are a lot of folks in it that are in it for the wrong reason. But this man walked the walk. I've been, I was with him for two years, getting in from a road trip at 2.30, as I talked about. He would go in the gym and work, and he'd send me back to the dorm. Say, Mike, you gotta go to class tomorrow. I never heard this man use inappropriate language, humiliate a teammate, or degrade an official. And what an example. And to me, Coach, that's the best kind of leadership, is leadership by example. And you've been a true gentleman and a great example for so many people. And look what we have here now. Because of man's hard work in 1963, we have this terrific athletic program. And it's, to me, you can't find any better in Division II or anywhere. And we, he was tough on us. He was very tough on us. Very demanding about the way we acted, the way we acted in class, that we went to class and we passed. And what an experience for a very average guy to have an opportunity to have a nice and productive life. And Coach Davis has helped so many of Coach, thank you again. Uh, God bless you, and God bless the University of Montevallo. Thank you. It's tough to get a and the members got to go. <laughs> so much for coming out tonight. This is a, a record audience, so hopefully next year we'll be at 300 people here. No? Okay, we'll keep it right this cat. But thanks for coming tonight, and uh, just remember, everybody in this room that was nominated tonight, and all the past winners, or if you're like me, and you're just, you played at Montevallo, you graduated from here, like some of the people who raised their hand, we're all a part of something here that we're celebrating tonight. When you go back for the next 364 days before you come back here, we're representing this university and what it stands for. And it's something special, it's a tradition. And we added to this tradition tonight. So, be proud of that. And thank you to all the, uh, the people who made this happen, and to the inductees in 2016, congratulations.